And um, we are now moving to um, our first um, main speaker. And so I'm delighted to introduce to you um, Tricia Pereira, who's the Director of Operations for Skill for Care, and she's also a um, social worker. Uh, um, also a social worker, she's played a key role in skills for care work, um, supporting equality, diversity and inclusion um, across social care. She's the core shelf development of um, health and social care. Is that right? I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Do you want to come and introduce yourself, uh, Tricia? So let me welcome you. At all. That's okay. I was getting I was getting quite embarrassed. <laughs> oh dear. I was getting embarrassed then. <laughs> it's yeah. lovely. Thank That's you. right. Welcome. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning, there. everyone. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll start. I'm Fisher Pereira. I am um social worker, registered still. Um Still very proud to be a social worker. And I'm also um, a co-chair of the Workforce Race Equality Standards um, for Social Care. And I have my advisory group member, um, Mira, who's here today. You'll hear from her later. Um, and I'm really excited about being invited to this event. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, do I need to speak a bit louder? OK, will do. Um, yeah, so today, we're um, celebrating, obviously, World Social Work Day, week, month. It should be year, forever. Um, <laughs> but we are recognising, explicitly recognising, the contributions of social workers who have journeyed to work with us here, supporting individuals, families and communities um, all around. It's I, I can't stress enough how excited I was to be invited to be here today. Um, so a few months ago at Skills for Care, we had a celebratory event for nurses and nursing in social care um, and internationally recruited nurses. And I was saying at the time, we need to do something for social workers. And I can see another colleague who's in the room, Flora, and we've spoken so much about supporting um, social workers who have travelled from overseas and are doing a fantastic job. And then I was contacted and I thought, this is just amazing. Well done, well done, the special interest group. It's fabulous, it really is. So, can I stop? Yes, so, yes you can continue. Okay, so, It's not moving. It's not moving. So I um so I join you as a fellow social worker, and as I said, and I join you as a social worker whose mother um relocated to England many years ago, and that's my mum. And she was uh, a nurse actually and she came from Montserrat in the Caribbean to England in the 60s um, and worked for the NHS and then became a, a, a nurse in social care in adult social care when the um, Community Care Act all the legislation changed and so she became a, a social care nurse and I'm often thinking about her journey and we've just heard from Jason Brandon who's the mental health lead and everybody else talking about the fantastic contributions and, and the roles that people play. So as I've said today we're not only celebrating World Social Work Day but we're also celebrating um, you all who have come to support the work that we're doing and to build new lives here. Um, so the social work profession is one of the most ethnically diverse professions in adult social work and almost a third 30 percent of adult social workers and 24 percent and that's a percentage up from last year which was 23 percent so 24 percent of children and family social workers are from black asian or ethnically minoritized backgrounds and as Priya said, um, we have launched the Social Care Workforce Race Equality Standards, the annual report recently, and that just really underlines all of the um, experiences, the data, the stats that has been collected 
However, it's only from the first 23 local authorities. Now, behind all the stats, behind all the data, behind everything that we're collecting, behind the number crunching, are people, real people, who are living the lives and sometimes very challenging experiences of working in the UK. And we've seen an, a significant increase in the number of social workers applying to work in England. So according to Social Work England, the annual applications have nearly tripled in the past three years. And practitioners are from diverse backgrounds, Zimbabwe, Australia, India, South Africa, Ireland. And actually, people from Ireland are the third largest number of social workers. So. The arrival and the commitment further enriches our profession and strengthens our resolve to create positive change. And as a member, a former member of the Department of Health's International Recruitment Steering Group, I know the pivotal role that you all play in supporting to shape service delivery and the recovery of the nation's well-being, the overall well-being following the global pandemic. And your impact extends far beyond any borders. And when I was working with the department, there was the investment, we supported with the, with the investment of £15 million to really promote and support and encourage the, um, the, the ongoing um, opportunities for people who want to practice social work here. Now, it's really interesting because the current political climate may seem that you're not welcome. But we can see in the room here, you are very much welcome and very much needed and very much wanted. And I want to make that clear. Very much welcome and very much needed and wanted. And your contributions should not be overlooked. You know, I often think what draws people, what draws social workers to the UK? And I'm sure it's more than the iconic red buses or the green and white buses, whatever <laughs> buses are in your area, and the bustling streets of the cities or the picturesque countryside. It's more than that. And when I'm talking with social workers, it's the promise of making a difference. It's the chance to empower families, protect children, advocate for individuals and families and uplift communities. And it's the opportunities to learn, grow and contribute to a society that aligns with our values, with people's values of compassion and justice. And social work is not an easy profession. You know, it really isn't. It's definitely not about the money either. <laughs> we, we would be, yeah. <laughs> me not go there today <laughs> so the journey from home countries to ours is not without hurdles and having to face cultural adjustments language barriers and the complexities of new systems new legal systems getting to grips with the theoretical perspectives and how they are embedded it's and at a rapid pace is a challenge and yet people do persist and people still come and they're attending training and adapting their practice and building bridges, as we heard already, across continents and across local streets and community centres and cafes, across offices and hospital wards. And their resilience, our resilience, your resilience is the testament to the unwavering spirit of the profession. And the world is interconnected, and so are health and, and so are our health and social care systems. And as we battle health inequalities and we strive for universal access to health and compassionate care, we recognize that actually our challenges are shared no matter where we're from. So overseas qualified and internationally recruited social workers bring diverse perspectives, cultural competence and a wealth of experience that we can learn from. The UK faces shortages of health and social care professionals. And overseas qualified social workers fill that critical gap. They're ensuring that populations receive the support that they need. And like my mother, their willingness to relocate and serve in unfamiliar environments is really commendable. Our society is richly diverse with people from various backgrounds and workers understand the cultural nuances, language barriers and unique needs that bridge the gaps. 
and they build the understanding and promote inclusivity. You know, as social workers, we advocate for the rights of individuals and communities, and we support people to amplify voices that might otherwise go unheard. And we want to empower people who are marginalised, and we fight discrimination, and we champion social justice. And the diaspora group is the group that is also am amplifying the voices of social workers that might otherwise go unheard. And we have to support each other and we have to pull together. And during my time on the International Recruitment Ministerial Steering Group, our commitment to ethical recruitment was paramount because supporting internationally recruited social workers is crucial to ensuring it's crucial to ensuring their well-being and the effectiveness in their roles. A valued profession where people feel that they belong provides better outcomes for everybody concerned. And we have the BASWA International Recruitment Induction Standards. So thank you, Special Interest Group, the Diaspora Group. Excellent work there. It's a much needed framework providing guidance on best practice in the recruitment and induction processes for social workers. And we also have the Department of Health Code and Practice for international recruitment as well. And that outlines the principles and some of the principles around fairness, ensuring fairness in employment contracts, safeguarding the rights of both workers and employers so that they can safeguard the rights of people in our communities that are being supported. So no exploitative practices should be tolerated. And then having agreements with countries where, um, so I, th I think the, the understanding is managed migration. So having the, the agreements that benefits not only the UK, but also the sending countries as well to make sure that it's ethical. And then the organisations have to be ethical recruiters and understanding and having the underlying um, assurance that they know exactly what needs to be done. Because ethical recruitment practices protect social workers and uphold human rights and strengthen our health and social care systems. So previously um, I was at Skills for Care, I have now left Skills for Care, um, and I'm on to really exciting things that hopefully I'll be able to talk about um, shortly. But a lot of the work was focusing on, focusing on wider social care. And for the first time in many years, there's been an increase in men um, joining social care as well. And that's down to international recruitment. Oh. It's gone from 18% to 19%. That's something that we've been trying to change for the past six or seven years. And we finally made that small, but really significant increase. And the workers are providing the essential services and support, improving lives and maintaining independence. And international social workers are facilitating community, community integration for refugees, asylum seekers and migrants. And they're also helping newcomers navigate the complex systems, find housing and access health care. And in an, era, in an era where mental health matters more than ever, workers are using their skills to provide counselling conversations, emotional support and crisis intervention. So as a global professional community, we have a responsibility to welcome, support and learn from our colleagues. So let us share knowledge and celebrate diversity because we celebrate resilience, we celebrate your resilience, empathy and commitment and social workers who are bridging those gaps and building a healthier, more inclusive society. So thank you. We recognise your invaluable contribution and together we can create that brighter future. One where, as I said earlier, that health and social care and social work have no boundaries because together we can create a stronger, more compassionate social work landscape. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from others today. I think it's going to be a great day. And I know this is the start and I'm really excited to be involved. So thank you all for your contribution. Thank you very much.